Welcome to the Universal Christian Church of Christ. I'm Dr. Tron LaFavor here with Pastor James LaFavor, the Senior Pastor of the Universal Christian Church of Christ. God bless you, Dr. LaFavor. Good to be along with you again to bring the Word of God to the people. I know you're waiting for a word from the Lord. Today Amen. we have a good message for, for you uh, coming from it's really on the book of Psalms. Uh, 119 verse 165 along with some other scriptures but the key thing here is this great man of God talks about great peace that has been his discovery so this is what I want for every person out there today I want this to be a new day I want things to turn around for you that you can begin to make the practice of this Word of God your practice. Uh, it's time now to, to just get serious about the Word of God and take it in and apply it to our lives. Don't look at other people uh, or just begin to think and believe and receive what is your birthright, what you can receive from God. Amen, Pastor. Thank you so much. The topic of today's message is the eternal benefits of loving the law of God. There are unbelievable benefits, my friends, when we come to a point where we love the law of God. Now, it's going to take some enlightenment, but once we get there, life takes on all new meanings. We will begin this sermon with two Bible readings. Our first Bible reading will come from the Gospel, Matthew chapter 5. Verse 19, the scripture says, So if you ignore the least commandment mm -hmm. and teach others to do the same, you will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. God is serious about, about his uh, commandments. Uh, people have taken it lightly. Uh, many people down through the centuries, but, you know, and it's had held a, a lot of people back. Uh, uh, God is very serious about his commandments. They're important. Amen. But anyone who obeys God's laws mm -hmm. and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Got to teach the law. Go ahead, doctor. Our second Bible reading comes from James chapter 1, verse 25. The Bible says, but if you look carefully into the perfect law. In the law, it's there. I want to help you look at this law because I want a new life for you. I want things to turn around. Uh, I, I want the rest of your days to be your best days. Praise God. If you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you My heard, God. then God will bless you for doing it. This is exciting. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, your law is perfect. It revives the soul. Your statutes are sure, they make the simple wise. Your precepts are right, rejoicing the heart. And your commandments, O Lord, are pure, enlightening the eyes. Lord, help us to desire your word more than gold, even much pure gold. For your law is sweeter than honey dripping from the honeycomb. Lord, help us from this message to love your law as pastor unfolds the benefits of loving your law. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. What a powerful prayer. We thank you, doctor, for that prayer. Those who love God's word will experience God's peace. Mm -hmm. In our text, Psalms 119, verse 165, the Bible says great peace have they which love thy law. Think about this. Great peace will they, ha will they have who love the law of God. Now we're going to dig into this because we want this peace for ourselves. And nothing shall offend them. My God, nothing, nothing. From the Living Bible it says, Those who love your law have great peace of heart and mind Amen. and they do not stumble. This is what we need. This is what we've been waiting on. The peace that uh, passes understanding. We just want great peace. That's what we want. 
Uh, a lot of times people have a desire for a lot of things, but I think what we really want, we just want peace. We, we need peace. Praise God. Peace is essential, and it is a primary aspect of a Christ-centered life. Let us go for it. Let us define peace. The word priest from a biblical perspective, in the Old Testament, peace is defined as completeness, soundness, and well-being of the total person. Now, this is not a uh, pleasure, worldly pleasure. This is lasting spiritual uh, peace. We're talking about spiritual peace here today, something that lasts and endures forever. In the New Testament, in Galatians 5 and 22, peace is a vital characteristic mm -hmm. of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is. When we receive the grace of God, it produces in us a powerful love for the word of God. Mm -hmm. In John's gospel, chapter number one, verse 14 through 17, the Bible says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Verse 16 says, And of his fullness have all we received grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses. All right, the law. Listen to that. It was given by Moses. But look at this. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You know, here it is right here. So when we receive this grace that is offered by Jesus Christ, this the word who became flesh, then we'll love the law. We'll love the law because the grace, the grace of God is so undeserved uh, uh, that we will have to develop an awful love for the law of God. Praise God, Pastor. When we place faith in the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. for salvation, that's right. We develop an abiding love for the law of God. That's what we want. We want an abiding love. Let us consider what Jesus said about the law in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. The scripture says, Think not that I came to destroy the law. I see a lot of people think that uh, we don't really need the law. And uh, you know, it's amazing that, that so many people find a problem with the law, but that should not be any problem with the law. The law was given for our own good. It was given to Israel that they may would know how to live uh, the principle of God among other heathen nations. And this um, uh, law was passed on down through generations and it, it was, uh, uh, Rules to live by. Amen. And uh, and we always need rules you know, because when you don't have any rules, then you don't have any kind of intact uh, system or family system or society. Amen. So we need rules. So we really should love and appreciate that. But everybody, you know, can't. But after this message, I just want us to see uh, the law is not going to hurt us. It's there for our own good. It's going to bless God. us in every way. Thank you for waiting in on that. My God. Thank you for that. As Jesus said, think not that I came to destroy the law mm -hmm. or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus believed in the law. He, he was the law. He fulfilled the law. And uh, you know uh, uh, that when we receive his grace, uh, it makes us want to just do the right thing and love God and say, thank God that we have a uh, guide, we have rules uh, to live by, we have something to refresh us, we have something to protect us, something to help us, Amen. to teach us, and give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Can't you see it, my friends out there? If, if we learn how to love God's law, how it's going to bring us so much of peace and satisfaction and make everything better for us. Praise God. In this message today, we want to learn why God gave his people the law. We want to explore this by looking closely 
and what was in the mind of the psalmist concerning his love for God's law. In Psalm 119, as we weigh in on it again, verse 165, the scripture says, Great peace mm -hmm. have they which love thy law. And that's big right there. Now here's, a, here's this psalmist. Uh, uh, this psalmist, he was a prophet. He could see things that other people around him could not see because a lot of people were running away from the law, that they was afraid of it. They maybe find it to be a problem for, for them. But this man is able to tell us that he loved the law. And this pauses us and make us think about it and say, look, we, we want to go with you because we want to see uh, uh, what, is, what is it that causes you to love the law of God? You know, we know it's not hard, it's not difficult, but, but why do we become to love the law of God? Amen, Pastor. The text goes on to say, and nothing mm -hmm. shall offend them. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. When, when we love in God's law, nothing will cause us to stumble. You know, things will come against us and we may be tried and tested, but we'll be able to go on. And this is the deep abiding word that we want to give in, into now. Because, you know, it's really time out for foolishness now. It's time to get serious about the word of God. God, you know, uh, that was a time when, when it was more people were so excited and so in love with the scriptures, with the Bible, and we'll, 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 we'll get in there again because it's vital, it is necessary to love the Word of God. No more fooling around. It's time to get busy. Praise God, Pastor. Thank you for weighing in on that. According to the Bible, why did the psalmist love the law of God? Mm -hmm. We want to model this kind of love of God's law in our daily lives. You know, he loved the law of God because in his day he could see something uh, the others couldn't see around him. He was looking down the quarters of life, looking to the coming of Jesus because Amen. he knew that there would come a time when uh, the one who could perfectly keep the law would come and give all this grace that, that will give people the, the uh, passion Amen. and the desire to want to live uh, by the rules of God so we can be more like him, Amen. And, you know, to have his ways uh, and, and live good and, and, and live right. And because of this great love that will come through Christ. And so this psalmist, he just had uh, just so much uh, appreciation and love for what this law could do. Not only what it would do in the future, but what it could do in his day. Praise God. This was the psalmist's testimony. Mm -hmm. His experience with God led to an unconditional love that was not based on circumstances. We want to be the same way with us. We want this kind of love. We, we want this kind of love. And, and people, some people do have it, but we have to work at it. We have to do something. Uh, but we want to be able to love God law because when we love the word of God, uh, everything has fallen in place. Now we are strong. We are happy. We are satisfied. Everything falls in place when we know how to honor and respect and love the law of God. It's no doubt about it. Loving the law of God was not only his delight, mm -hmm. but it was the vehicle of his expression. Mm -hmm. He tells us about his experience of great peace Amen. because he had an inward submission to the will of God. Well, this was the outcome of, of, of his, because he was humble, uh, uh, like Moses was, you know, he was, he was humble. And when you're humble, uh, then you're going to be able to reap and taste the, the benefits of God. And we'll have this great communion with him and this intimacy. And that's for you and I today. God. That, that if, if we uh, would just, just uh, weigh in on, 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 this, on this offer that God gives us and we'll try to, to develop what's already in the Bible, what this psalmist have then uh, we will have this great peace Praise that, God. that passes understanding. Thank you for that, Praise Pastor. God. Those who love God's law, they mm -hmm. think about his law daily. Daily, daily. Let us consider what the psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 97. 
Oh, how I love them. Oh, that's so passionate. Oh, how I love them. Oh, how I love the law of God. But you know, uh, I've seen a lot of people, and I love the, the word of God myself. I love the law of God. But there are so many people, you know, it, for them, it's just more than going to church, more than just reading a word or a pamphlet here and there. They have developed uh, this great love for Scripture and the Bible and the Word of God just mean everything to them. It's a companion for them. It is everything. I, I can't explain to, to, to you really what it's like when we fall in love with the law of God Amen. or with the Word of God. Uh, it, it is truly amazing. Praise God. He said, oh, how I love the law of oh, God. Oh, I love the law. I think about them oh, all day Listen long. That. Listen to that. So a lot of people don't even, it's a mystery to a lot of people. How can anybody think about the law of God all day long? It, it's a mystery. But if you if you take the word of God in and you listen to God and you pray and you meditate and, 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 and if you desire that I want uh, or, or, or what uh, it's in the scripture here and I want it for myself it belonged to me then you will be able to become a recipient of this great peace this great happiness this great joy it is in the word and it's amazing it is a mystery a lot of people uh, just don't even know what can be offered to you and I persuade you today get excited about love for the law of God praise God pastor we want to take away from this message mm -hmm. a deep desire to practice loving God's law continually. We got to take something away from this message. We got to take it away. We want to get deeper into the love of God. Well, I, I know you like the word to some degree, but, but maybe you don't have that appetite for it daily. You don't have that the desire. Just like a baby want their, their bottle, that their, their, the baby want, want their... Their, their food or, or whatever. Maybe you, you, you don't have that desire, but we want you to come to a place. You're so excited about Amen. the Word of God. You know, your, your Bible is not collecting <laughs> dust, but you enter it and it speaks to you and it is ministering to you. It is changing you. Amen. It can be, this can happen for you. There's no doubt. Let me ask you an important question. Yes. How do we acquire this type of love? We have to know how to do it. Law? Come on, talk to us. This kind of love mm. for the law will only come to us through sincere practice of prayer. You know, doctor, it must it must be kind of hidden because a lot of people are not experiencing this. You know, this is not criticism, but just think about what have part in your life. What is the first thing that that you do every day, day in and day out? You know, how much are you able to? To, because if you love the law of God, we can truly love people. We can be connected. We can care about each other. We can uplift each other. We can build each other, either, uh, each other up, uh, and we can just just have so much care and so much compassion for one another. I've seen it in work. We can have it, but it's kind of like a mystery until we get into it and taste it. Amen. Praise and God. Taste it for ourselves. It's something that that you that you just you have to taste it. So I ask you today is taste this taste word it. of God. Praise God. Taste this truth and you'll see that you will it will you'll find delight in in it. It will become precious to you that you wouldn't want nothing more than a love for the ancient scriptures of the Bible. This kind of love mm -hmm. of the law of God, yes. it will only come to us Gotta do through something. Come sincere on. practice of prayer, through meditation, Gotta be sincere. Yes. and accurate study of the scriptures. Now your scripture study has to be accurate. Uh, it must be accurate. So that means that, that we have to be guided uh, through the word uh, by someone who is able to help and guide us and teach us how to write the divide. Amen. And then once you learn how to write the divide the word of God, then you can help others. And, and, and you're going to know when you're right the dividing the word of God because you're going to start to to develop this strong passion of love for the law of God. It's going to be your companion every day, Praise every God. day and every night. 
The study of the Word of God, Pastor, it yes. has to be a daily practice. It's got to be a daily practice. It's got to be a practice. Go ahead. When we make God's Word an integral part of mm -hmm. our daily lives, yes. we will be on the course for developing great peace as the psalmist did. My God. Let us go back. And mm -hmm. look for the principle and application of Psalm 119, verse 165. I like it. I love it. The Bible says, those who love your law. Those who love your law. That is so touching. Those. Uh, it is not everybody, but those, you know, uh, more people can, but those who love your law. Come on, my friend. You become one of those. Become one of those, please, today, and get this love for the law of God. And when you get it, you'll know it because you'll be so nurturing to others, to your uh, to people. You'll be so caring. You'll be so understanding when we acquire this love of the law of God. Praise God. It's Pastor. a beautiful thing. It's nothing like it. In the, I tell you, in the world, it's an awesome thing. It is an awesome thing, Pastor. And the text goes on to say, you will have great peace. Great peace. You will have great peace. It is the love for the law of God. But you know something? It's going to take a uh, uh, connection. It's going to take an enlightenment. Amen. It's going to take some uh, understanding. And it's going to take some inspiring. And uh, it's going to take some empowerment. So you can be on the road to that. You'll be able to tell, you know, you'll walk different, talk different, think different, and be different. Everything around you will change. Abundant life will begin to flow in for you like a river. You look around and, and you just won't be able to believe it, that you're a different person, that I'm not the same. Come on. Praise God. The text says nothing, nothing. makes them stumble. That's right, nothing. Because there are things, uh, you know, that, that, that's there to make us stumble, but the deeper we are, we are in the love of God, sure, you know, you're a Christian, you go to church, you read the Bible sometimes, you know, I don't know how often you read it, but I'm talking about developing this love, this passionate love for the law of God. Praise that's God. where we want you to go. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter, Praise God. Number six, verse four through nine. Come on. The love of God is stated in this way. Mm -hmm. Listen, O Israel. This is so precious. Come on. The Lord our God, the Lord alone. Yes. And you must love the Lord your God. Look what with the all Bible is heart. saying. Look what it is saying. Come on. With all your soul and yeah. with all your strength. This, this this is mysterious. A lot of people say, hi, is this possible? But once we really fall in love with the law of God, this is easy. The one who, uh, our creator, our sustainer uh, of life, and the one who has done so much with us, the one who is our daily companion. So, so you know, this is all possible then. It's possible. And, and you can do it. It can happen for you. I'm, I'm, I want you uh, who've been coming up far too short out there. This is your message today. Praise God. And you must commit yourself yes. wholeheartedly to mm -hmm. those commands that I am giving you it, today. God is telling them right up front what we got to do. But so many people miss that. Come on. Repeat them again and again mm -hmm. to your children. You say keep on repeating over and over again. So now, are we doing that? Well, well the answer probably is no. It's not a lot of people are doing that. But I tell you what, if we do it, if we talk or walk around with a mind full of word and a heart full of word and teach about it and talk it to our kids and everything, boy, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see some great dividends paid from that. But so many people don't do that because they're not inspired to do it. But there is a higher level for your faith, for your Christian life. This is the appeal I make to you today because there is a higher level. Praise God, Pastor. Talk about them. When you are at home, mm -hmm. when you are on the road, when you are going to bed. But how many people do this? How many people do this? How many people, because they just have not learned to enjoy the Word of God on this kind of level. But it's there for us. But we just have to tap in to this divine source of, our, I tell you, this divine source of intimacy. We need to tap into it. It's there. Hey, man, Pastor, thank you for weighing in on that. Mm. And when you get up in the morning. When you, come on. According to what is 
for mention, mm-hmm. if we are going to attain great peace mm-hmm. in our life, we should attain it. We should be reaching out to it. But it's just like a mystery. We are going to have to put the study of the scriptures first. Come on. We can do this. We can do it. A lot of people don't like to do it because we say, oh, I see how I'm missing out. You know, that's just too much. They cost it. They, they, it pays so much a great dividends to love the Lord and not to worry about stumbling. And they have great peace. Amen. Come on, invest in this. How do we make application of this message? All right. Let us consider what Jesus said about the law and mm-hmm. its fulfillment in Matthew 5 and 17. And here's again, you can tell the world, Jesus, the law is divine. The law is God. Uh, the law is uh, is revealed what God is like and what he wants us to be like. So Jesus didn't come to do away with that. He come to fulfill it. And by fulfilling it, guess what he did? He paid for our sins. He paid for our sins. And none of us have to be lost, that we can be saved or if we receive this gift of grace that he offered. Then you don't have to worry about, about, about keeping the law because you'll want to do the right thing. Trust me. Trust me. You really will. Well, now, we cannot get saved by the law because nobody's never going to do it perfectly enough. But we can accept the salvation for Jesus Christ and be so appreciative, so excited Amen. about the fact that he has died and, and, you know, and made uh, salvation, eternal life possible for us. All that grace flowing in, unmerited favor, of what we don't deserve, you get so excited. You say, thank God for his law, for his word. Oh, I love that law. Praise God. I say that. Thank you, Pastor. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Look at yeah. what Jesus said. Don't misunderstand mm-hmm. why I have come. Don't misunderstand me. I did not come to abolish the law of All Moses right. or the writings of the prophets. See, some people think that. Go ahead. Dr. No, I came to accomplish My their purpose. God, that purpose. It's a purpose in the law. The purpose is in that law. And he came to accomplish that purpose. And I can tell you, uh, um, in the most simplest form, it was to make help people to live by standard. It was to help people to recognize their sins and their own shortcomings and accept the grace of God uh, and love God so much in return because the, the, um, the, the law of God is God speaking to us. And we appreciate that so much. So Praise that God. makes sense to you. That we appreciate God speaking to us and talking to us and giving us guidance. We appreciate it so much. I wish everybody out there today would appreciate good guidance and good guidelines for moral living. I hope everybody would because it'll make all the difference and bring you the peace, uh, great peace. Thank you for that, Pastor. Mm-hmm. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse 14, the Bible says, And the Word was made flesh yes, and dwelt among us. That's why it's so great. And we beheld his glory, mm-hmm. the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Yes. He was full of grace. Yes, full of grace. And truth. Mm-hmm. When we embrace the grace that came to us by Jesus Christ. Got to embrace it, friends. Come on. We will acquire great peace and we won't stumble. Peace will be on the way and you'll become a strong person. Very, very strong in life. We'll be stronger or we'll be able to go out and we'll be able to achieve some greatness right on this side of, of life. We'll be able to achieve some greatness. Praise God. In order to achieve this peace, let us make application of James 1 and 22. The Bible says, but don't just listen to God's word. I like this. You must do what it says. Now, that's the thing right there that people do not know it is more than worth it. Worth it to do what he say do. If we live by God's command and do what he say, I guarantee you he'll make a way and we will have this great peace. Not this great peace, this great pleasure, this great joy. Amen. You know, not fleeting joy, not fleeting pleasure like the world, but this will be sustaining pleasure in every situation. We'll be so nice to people, to ourselves, we'll be so kind, we'll be so gentle, we'll be so caring, we'll be so forgiving, so understanding. Uh, This is what we was created to be. Praise God for that. And we can do it if we learn to love God's law. We can do it 
The text says, James 1 and 22. It's right there in the Bible. But don't just listen to God's word. But see, some people listen. They're good. They're pretty good listeners. Uh, uh, but they don't. They just listen. It takes a little bit more than that, my friends. He says, you must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. Well, see, that it's, stop, it's time to stop fooling around. And we got too many people that we're fooling around without even thinking about it. Because you know what? I did pray last night, and I did read the Bible. Maybe you read a verse here and there. Or maybe you didn't. But it's time out to, for us fooling, fooling around. It's time to get serious about pleasing the Lord and doing what he said. It's time to get serious about loving Amen. one another by reaching out to one another, by caring and being compassionate. It's time to do that. we got to become doers of the word, doers of the word. And as you can see, that's what holds people back. A lot of people like to talk about the word. They can they like to quote scripture sometimes. They, but they do not like to do what the words say do. They do some things, but some things mm -hmm. they just won't do. Praise God. We must get serious about the law of God. We must. We must. We are going to have to overcome some things. Now, you have to overcome some things, but it's worth it, my friends. You're going to have to give up uh, things that we need to give up anyway. You have to overcome some things. You've got to kind of crucify yourself from some things, sanctify yourself from some things. But, oh, what great payoff. When you find yourself uh, enjoying and experiencing a uh, great love for God's law and love for your fellow man. Oh, Lord, I can't explain what's that like. To always want to lift people up, always want to encourage people, always want to listen, to always to, to do your best, to, to treat people so kind, treat everybody like a neighbor uh, down inside of your heart. But it takes the love of the law of God in order to do it. Praise but God. it's worth the investment. It's worth the investment. It is more than worth it. Amen. In John chapter 6, verse 63, mm -hmm. the scripture says, It is the spirit that quickeneth. Mm -hmm. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profiteth never. So many times we got to be careful because we go by how we feel. But if you wait until you feel like studying the word of God, until you feel like praying, until you feel like getting in Bible study, until you feel like listening to the sermons and making your notes and taking your notes, until you feel like getting on the prayer group and getting together in prayer, if you wait till you feel like it not very many people are going to be able to do it because you're going to have to do something you're going to have to fight the flesh early on but once you start doing it you'll be so excited and you'll be so happy to do it and you'll be so loving so kind and so gentle once you make that but come on friend it's time out now it's time out now you it, 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 you, you can do this this is your birthright it's time for a reflection point. It's time to stop and think a minute and say, you know what, how much I've been missing out on, on, on my, how much I should be loving God and loving the law of God, the most precious thing in the universe. Amen. Praise Thank God. you for weighing in on that, Pastor. As Jesus said in John 6 and 63, yes, it is the spirit that quickened it. Mm -hmm. The flesh profited nothing. Mm -hmm. The words that I speak. The words, the words, the words I speak. But if we're not listening attentive to the words that he speaks, but because the grace that is coming to our lives and listen closely to the word and fill our minds and heart with the word of God, we're not going to experience this beautiful, spiritual, peaceful life. Praise God. Life of great peace, lasting peace. Amen. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they oh, are Lord. spirit. And they are life. That is what we've been waiting on a long time. We think it's something else. We think it's another house, another car. We think it's fine clothes. We think it's all of these things. These things are okay, but that is not what's going to bring you peace. And people who are acquired so much of the money in the world, so much of fine things, will tell you they will not produce lasting peace. But we have a good way of trying to put the best on the outside but in order to get that good uh, peace on the inside and lasting peace where we can love everybody then we're going to have to do something we're going to have to make a change thank you for weighing in on that pastor 
As you can see, mm -hmm. the Word of God produces spirit and life in it us. It's in and the this is what we need what to we need. take away from this message. Well, take this away. You know, hey, I, I want some new spiritual things to happen in my life right now. For myself, for my kids, for my family, and I want to lead the way in this. I want to make my life count in a spiritual way. You, you should say, I want my life to Amen. count in a spiritual way. Praise and a God. lot of people feel like you can't touch people, but if you will live by the law of God, I mean live by for love, by the law of God and love for his word, and people will see that showing up inside of you, you'll touch somebody's life. Praise God for weighing in on that, Pastor. When we become recipients of God's grace, then we will become lovers of the law as the psalmist did. My God, the same way. We will be able to understand when God and what God has done for us. We will be able to do that. And what he is doing. Yes. We will be able to take on the principles found in Psalms chapter 119, verse 165, and we will be lovers of the grace of God. And this is the whole uh, theme of this message because God wants this for you. I want it for you. The doc here want it for you. And all of us as teachers and preachers, we want it for you. All Christian people, all people who have really reached this level of, of caring and compassion and love uh, want you to have the same thing. We want you to have it. Psalm 119, verse yes. 165, the Bible says, Those who love your laws. Those. You want to become one of those. Have great peace. You can do this. I don't care how far down you've been and what you've been going through. It's in the Bible. The Bible don't lie. If we can just learn to follow this prescription, what we're talking about today, and get in the Word and stay in it, you can achieve this great peace. That'll be a remarkable blessing for you and everybody around you. Praise God. Praise God. They will have great peace of heart mm -hmm. and peace of mind, and they will not stumble. And it's the only way that we can uh, get this level of steadfastness. The only way we can ever acquire this level of fruitfulness, uh, this level of stability is the only way we want it. Amen. Yes. With this, we can have it all. We can have it all. We can have it all, my friend. You know, in this message here, because I know when we get peace, we get peace like a river. And, and I know when we're able to find peace uh, within ourselves, just like Thanksgiving coming up. It is true that one person alone can celebrate Thanksgiving. Why? Because you'll have the peace of God in your heart. And we cannot explain it, but it's it's it's, it's your birthright and Amen. God wants us to have it. But you gotta become one of those in order to achieve this great level of spirituality and of this spiritual life. We want it, we need it, we, we want to be satisfied from the inside out. Praise God. I thought I said satisfied from the inside, inside out. out. Praise Not God. Not satisfied and happy for what's out there, but to be joyful and Amen. happy from what from the inside out. And we want to test this by finding out how much love and truly real care and real compassion that we have for every human being on this planet, uh, the downtrodden uh, Whatever people may be going through, we'll be a true neighbor. We'll be a true friend. We'll pray for each other. We'll lift each other. we encourage you. That is the test. Amen. Galatians 5, chapter 22. Yes, Lord. And 23, the Bible mm -hmm. says, but when the Holy Spirit controls our lives. Yeah. When he, you love the law of God so much, and this Holy Spirit will begin to, to just... Just, just motivate our life. It'll be able. To, it'll be the thing that we live by that can happen for us. He will produce this kind of fruit in us. Yes. Love. Love. We can have it all. We can have love. 
love for one another. Praise God. We can love one another like the Bible says and keep on loving and never get mad and stop loving. We know <laughs> that there's more for us when we, we get angry, we get upset, and we stop loving, stop caring about people. And we cannot treat every human being the same. We know that we need this. Joy. We need this joy, this, this joy, this delight, this joy, this pleasure, this peace that comes with loving the Word of God, loving the law, designing the Word of God like a newborn baby. Peace. Peace, peace, this peace. Peace like a river. Peace that just constantly flows. That's why it's great peace because it, it continues to flow in our life like a flowing river. And when we get this, we won't have hardly any down moments. We'll be up and we'll be satisfied and we find our satisfaction in the peace that God give us, this great peace. And we won't stumble. You know, we, 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 we'll, you know, something will come against us. We will be tested and tried, but we'll find ourselves standing strong because of the peace that God has bestowed upon us because of our love for the word. Amen. Patience, mm -hmm. kindness. You start becoming so patient. You, know, you test yourself. You say, uh-oh, uh-oh, because I've started to love God's law. I'm not rushing anymore. I don't need to rush anymore that I find time to organize my day and my life. I have peace of mind, peace on the inside. I'm not ripping it in a world that is so busy, everybody rushing, too many people rushing, everything moving so fast. I'll be able to slow down. I'll be able to slow down and have discipline and patience in my life. I'll be able to work with my family, work with everybody, being patient, because sometimes just that moment of not going off, just that moment of still be willing to treat somebody a, a good way when they may not be responding to you that way, but have enough patience is, is not to just get upset and just fly off the hammer, be able to, able to have that, that peace and have that peace about life and be able to wait on God. Amen. Praise God. Kindness. Kindness. We'd be so kind. Oh, I love it. We'd be so kind to people. We'd be kind to people who are not kind to us. This is the real test. And I just want you to picture yourself as becoming an all brand new loving person. You're so encouraging. You're so kind. You're so understanding. You're so forgiving. You're so helpful. Amen. To the multitude. Praise God. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. Lord have mercy. But you got to have great peace. Goodness. Goodness. And you'll be so good. You know, you know, you'll be so good. You, you, you'll be good. Your character be good. You know, you have these good qualities in your daily life. And you'll be so good to people. You'll treat people so kind. you treat people good when they don't treat you good. Oh, that's a test for you. And we'll, we'll stop, you know, wanting to get even. We just, we can be good because um, this love, of the law of God has produced Amen. this capacity within us. Faithfulness. You be so faithful. Faith we live in a time now where people will tell you something and they won't even do it. They won't even think about doing it. You know, it, it's a time now It's coming more like this where people, word is just not their bond. But you know something, as God produced this peace within us that we be so truthful that, that our words we can stand on them, that, that if we tell people something, that it's going to get done. Praise God. Gentleness. We'll be so gentle, gentle, so gentle. And, oh, these are the traits that, it's, you know, it's so mysterious. We kind of think that it is impossible to be like this. Well, within ourselves, and within our own um, action, our own religion, self-religion, self-righteousness, we not, won't be able to do it. But if we receive this grace that come through Jesus Christ. We'd be so thankful for the offer of eternal life that we will say, boy, I got to love these scriptures, these ancient scriptures. Then you'll go back and search it and see what the psalmist said and see what it said, what the prophet said, and you will just wrap your mind and yourself into the word of God. Amen. And the final attribute is Self-control. Self-control, that's a big one right there. You know, that's one of the hardest, that's difficult. A lot of people never 
uh, develop self-control. And this is something we want for ourselves. We need it for our children. Because you know what? Look, friends, when we have self-control, we can put others first. We can delay gratification. That's a big thing. You know, that's why I tell young people, don't never drink, don't never smoke, don't never use drugs, wait on God. I'm saying it again. You know, you know that is my motto. I tell kids, don't never drink, don't never smoke, don't use drugs, and wait on God. Don't get in too big a hurry, and don't want to do what your peers are doing, what everybody else are doing. You, you'll be able to have the kind of self-control where you can go ahead and apply yourself through diligently reading and understanding the scripture. And to our young kids out there, young people, if you develop and acquire a great peaceful life, a great spiritual peaceful life, that and you get yourself an education, a good vocation, the sky is the limit for you. You'll make the best husband, the best wife that anybody has ever seen once you get this. And you'll be able to love everybody, love one another. God bless you. Amen. I thank you, doctor, for working with me, us working together on this message of what peace belongs to us. Amen. But we've got to know how to, how to go for it. But, you know, do you think it's time out not for foolishness? Is it time out for foolishness? Is it time to get serious? It is time to get serious, Pastor. It's yes. time for us to uh, reap the benefits that mm -hmm. God has in store for us because we want a full life. And as well, we apply mm -hmm. uh, what we've learned today mm -hmm. on the benefits of applying God's law to our lives, then we'll understand uh, how urgent it is for us yes. to get the word and apply it to our life so we can have a fulfilled life and reach the purpose and plans God has for us. So you think that loving the, loving the law of God or the word of God will do so much. It'll do so much for, for us. All of us. It'll do so much for yeah. us. It'll mm -hmm. do so much in our families. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll do so much that we can begin to love God's law mm -hmm. and make a daily application uh, through sincere prayer through reading of the Bible mm -hmm. and practicing the scripture daily, right. and also through meditating on God's word, right. uh, we can have the life that God has in store for us. Thank you so much, doctor. Okay, you got it, my friend. So we will see you hopefully, uh, you know, in the Bible study and also on prayer on the Friday night. Praise God. So this is how you're going to build uh, your endurance and develop or the peace that God wants for you. So be able to to tap in to all the services. And, and this is this will be evidence of you taking it serious that, you know, I want everything that God promised me. Praise God. May God I want it all. You. May God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. We ask that you would share this message with others. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, man. God bless you.